Hey friends, welcome to another video. And if you do like this video or anything we've done ever, then do consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon. It helps us produce these and more videos like this, including our city guides. And all your friends are doing it, and you don't want to be the only one who's not. So give us a look. We make some great perks available, and we'd really appreciate it. Russia wanted some of Finland to complete the Soviet domination of the Baltic Sea. Soviet bombers roared over Helsinki with death and destruction. I have a somewhat tenuous connection to this country. In the 1950s, my grandfather was stationed in Stockholm, ostensibly with the British Embassy, but in reality, he was in the intelligence game. When a Soviet fighter crashed somewhere in the Finnish wilderness, my grandfather would be tasked to get to it before the Soviets did and recover whatever information or technology was valuable to the West at that time and not get shot by the Soviets in the process. To facilitate this, he would pack his car full of scotch to make any questions about where he was going at three o'clock in the morning disappear. And so Greg and I are gonna recreate that right now. We're gonna pack a car full of booze and we're gonna drive into Russia just to see what happens. We're not, we're not, don't worry, we're not really gonna do that. As a result of his infiltrations and the time spent here in Helsinki, my grandfather was made a knight of the sauna in Helsinki at Wasen Kiami by the frozen shores of Helsinki, having observed the ritual of ordeal by steam and duly been boiled alive in all modesty and honor. I mean, what more can you say about that? Helsinki is served by the wonderful Helsinki Vanta Airport, located just 20 kilometers north of the city. This is a great airport, light, airy, efficient, and until the world started unraveling just a few years ago, was a rival to Zurich in the best airports to transit through. Nevertheless, arriving and departing from this airport is a breeze. Helsinki Airport's train station is located under the terminal. There is elevator and escalator access from the departures and arrivals hall to the train station. Local trains run to and from Helsinki Airport. The journey takes just 30 minutes and you can buy your ticket on the ticket machines on the platform. At just over four euros, it's an incredibly good value compared to some other neighboring capital cities. Looking at you, Stockholm. There are taxis available, but the system is complicated with four different companies operating from outside the arrivals hall. And the fares are steep for the 30 minute journey, anywhere between 30 and 50 euros. So if you can, try and aim for public transport into Helsinki. You could also be arriving in Helsinki on a train. In the olden days, like 18 months ago, you could take a train from Moscow and St. Petersburg directly to Helsinki. That is, for fairly obvious reasons, not happening anymore and probably won't for a very, very long time. However, all other trains arrive here at the beautiful and glorious Helsinki Central Station, which is also a very convenient interchange for the metro and trams. Helsinki is also extremely well served by its maritime connections. From the city's three passenger ports, you can take hourly services to Tallinn in Estonia, Stockholm and ports in Germany. All three ports are connected by the city's tram lines, which we'll come on to in a second. Helsinki is also frequented by cruise ships, but we're not going to talk about those because the f cruises. Once you're in Helsinki proper, it's really easy to get around for a number of reasons. One being that all public transport in the capital region is managed by HSL, a single organization. So there is no interagency nonsense to deal with. There are plenty of ways to get around the city, trains, trams, buses, the metro, boats, but let's get this out there right away. You cannot buy a ticket on board any of those forms of transport. You can buy them at ticket machines, kiosks, on the HSL app, but not on board. So take that few extra seconds to be prepared, save yourself the humiliation of not having a ticket. Your ticket price is based on a zone structure, which does add a layer of complexity to the process. So you're almost always gonna be better off getting a travel pass, much like a squeaker or an Oyster card, 
or one of these, an HSL day ticket, which gives you unlimited travel on all forms of transport across the city which HSL operate, which is basically all of them. There are no ticket checks on any form of public transport. However, as we have said in many past episodes, there are random ticket inspections by plainclothes and uniformed police officers. And if you get caught riding any form of public transport without a ticket, you will pay an 80 euro fine plus the cost of your ticket. And everybody around you will know that you're a little bit of a dick. One of the better ways to buy a ticket is the official HSL app, which lets you buy tickets right in the app and does not require a finished phone number for registration. Taxis are expensive in Helsinki since deregulation in 2018, but there are several companies to choose from. Uber is also widely available, but again, expect to pay more than you're probably used to, unless you're from San Francisco. No better way to start your Helsinki day than with a jam donut. Except it's not a jam donut. It is a beautiful Finnish traditional comfort food that is a donut dough, but it's filled with meat and rice, because why not? And then deep fried, and then microwaved. It's very savory, there's no sweetness to it, there's no powdered sugar or anything on it like you would expect. Uh, your brain is like, this is gonna be something nice and sweet, but it's not, and actually on a freezing day like today, this is a phenomenal way to start. Mm. So good. Believe it or not, the Finns are the per capita leaders in the production of two things, black metal bands and coffee drinkers. The Finns are the most prolific coffee drinkers in the world, averaging four cups of the good stuff a day. The most common varietal, if you will, is just filtered coffee, which you seem to find in these beautiful little self-service nests in every cafe and restaurant you enter. And because it's filtered, it's a little weaker than any espresso-based drink, which means you can keep it going all day. All day. During my research on the food of Finland and talking to actual Finnish people, this is the thing that came up time and time again that made Finns all misty-eyed with nostalgia and memories of home. It's unpronounceable, but the translation is essentially Corellian pie, a pie from uh, a region just slightly north of here. My brother Will describes it as an open-faced pie filled with stodge, and that's not actually that far from the truth. It's a rye crust. We talked about rye. It's a much hardier grain, so easier to grow in these conditions. Filled with rice or sometimes potato, and then covered, at least traditionally, with, I think it's pronounced munivoy, which is this beautiful mixture of hard-boiled chopped up egg and whipped butter, which then melts across the whole thing. A heady concoction in and of itself. It's a protected definition, which means you really need to come to Finland to have the real deal. And I think it's also one of those things where if you ask anybody from Finland or Helsinki where you should get it, they will tell you that the place that you got it was the wrong place to get it and it should have this and that place does it wrong. But for us visitors, I think, any traditional place like a food hall or a bakery is going to produce something that you and I are going to think, wow, and this is definitely wow. The uh, salmon soup? Yes, please. Given the length of Finland's coastline and the number of lakes that are in the country, it's hardly surprising that fish is a huge part of the Finnish diet. Every shape, every form, every type you can find in places like this, food halls and fish markets, and one of the best applications, I think, is this salmon soup. Fish soup can always be a little bit sketchy, but this is simple and delicious. It's, my mouth is actually watering. Chunks of salmon, as opposed to like a gruel of fish, big chunks of salmon, potato, leeks, dill, cream, butter. That's it. Really simple, really beautiful. It's freezing outside. So this is the perfect antidote to that. Incredible. It's not overwhelmingly fishy at all. It's more of the salty creaminess of the butter 
and just these wonderful pieces of local fresh salmon. It's served with rye bread. Rye, also a staple of, of Finnish culture because wheat would not grow in the Arctic temperatures that, uh, that this country experienced in its, its early days. So rye was the one thing that was able to grow and remains a staple of, uh, of the Finnish diet as well. It's lovely and warm and fresh. I'm gonna dunk, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, perfect. Any time of day. The main important the important thing in the fish soup is that we, we cook the stock out of the bones, fish bones, ourselves first. And then a little bit cream, very good finished potatoes, very fresh salmon. You cannot mess it up if you have a good ingredients. I couldn't have said it better myself. And Helsinki's old market hall is full of ingredients that prove his point. Thank you. Well, generally it's more of a Lappish cuisine, so Lapland up north. You can't come to Helsinki and not try reindeer. Settle down, it's fine. Rudolph isn't real. It comes in many different forms. You can get it in almost like a pate form or like this. This is smoked almost like a salami on a rye bread with lingonberries and a little bit of almost like cream cheese underneath. A little bit like venison, but not as strong a flavor. So really, really nice. I'm gonna smoke like this. It has a salami pastrami quality. So come to Helsinki and eat reindeer. And how do you round out your Helsinki food adventures? <laughs> Brace yourself, friends. Finally, maybe the most divisive thing in Finnish cuisine, salmiaki, salty licorice. I have a friend, a Finnish friend, who actually uses these as a practical joke. He offers them to visitors just to see their face when they eat it. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people describe. I do think it's one of those things like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. What's interesting about it is that it actually has a disinfecting property to it. It's coated in ammonium chloride, stay with me, and that gives it the salty taste. That ammonium chloride is neutralized by your slightly alkaline saliva, and so ammonia is released, which has a disinfecting property, among, among other things. So, <laughs> it is, incredibly astringent and immediately very salty but if you like black licorice wonderful if you hate black licorice it might actually kill you oh no <laughs> no it's not for me unlike its scandinavian cousins and though finland is not part of scandinavia Finland has adopted the euro as its currency, which makes things a little bit easier. Interestingly, cash transactions are all rounded to the nearest five cents. However, like much of Northern Europe, cash is an anathema here, so there will be no such rounding on debit and credit card transactions. So come equipped with those contactless debit and credit cards when you arrive in Finland. Let's be clear, Finland is an expensive country. Already high sales tax has been pushed even further by a recent jump in inflation, so it's going to feel really punchy when you get here. Not as bad as nearby Norway, not quite as bad, but everything will feel, I think, more expensive than you're used to. Food, transport, day-to-day -day items are all going to feel really expensive. So on that note, let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around three euros eighty. A glass of beer will cost you nearly eight euros. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you are going to pay four euros and ninety-five cents, or five dollars and twenty-two American cents. Helsinki, like much of Northern Europe, has an obvious appeal. I mean, look at it. How could it not? Nestled among islands and inlets, full of history built with coziness and comfort in mind, even in the midst of the harshest winter. Helsinki is compact enough to not feel overwhelming, but intricate and interesting enough to keep you busy for days if you so choose. 
The food, much like the city, is comforting and satisfying. Indeed, there's an effervescent warmth to this city, especially at this time of year, that is so charming, so magnetic, that it really is rather difficult to say goodbye to Helsinki's glow. I can at least take solace in the knowledge that, with any luck, I will return here soon enough.